my nature is to say, I need a plan. I need a way to put, I need to know a, a, a formula or something that I can use to, to share my faith. But what does this passage here tell us is, is don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the words to speak. I'm going to give you the, what, what you need in order to share. I know that person better than you know that person. So trust me. So that, that is another passage that sort of helps. And then we go over to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. We get another, another piece of um, advice as far as worry goes. It says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses everything from every thought, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So don't worry. So if you're on the mission team or if you're just going to work and you know that you need, there's a person at work that needs to hear the gospel, or if, if you're on off to school, Nathaniel's in summer school and she's just having a blast, right, Nathaniel? Yeah, it's the best thing in the world for summer school. And uh, but whatever you're doing, don't worry. Trust God. Submit it to Him in prayer. Believe that He has a plan for you. Believe that He has a way of working out. So who will go? Who will go for God? Who of you are will, is willing to go? The title of my message today is simply that. Is who will go? In Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, we read this. It says, And eleven disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had, had arrived with them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Then Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me, in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now this is an interesting passage, and if you've heard it preached up before, a lot of pastors will emphasize the fact that this is not a request. This is not a request to go do something. This is a command to go do something. It's an imperative. Jesus is saying, go. So as a disciple of Jesus Christ, the first uh, main disciples, first 11, that he met on that mount, he said, this is your command, this is my command to you. This is not an option for you. This is not something to consider. It's not something that we need to pray about. It's not something that we need to think about and, and uh, consider if it's part of our vision or part of our goals as a church. This is a command for the disciples of Jesus Christ. That we go. And what do we do when we go? We make disciples. Go therefore and make disciples of, of just Canadians, right? That's what it says. Or Americans. Or North Americans. No, it says go to make disciples of all nations. So it's not just a, a command to just sit around. It's not a command to, to just the preacher. It's not a command just to the missionary or the Sunday school teacher or the church council chairman or any of those kinds of things, those people. It's a command for every single one of us who call themselves disciples of Jesus Christ. Every one of you that is here this morning that believes that you, you invited Jesus Christ into your life, if you become one of his children, if you've been adopted in, if you've been grafted into the people of Israel, you <coughs> have a command to go. So not only do we send out missionaries from our church, a uh, mission team of, I can't remember how many total we have, Chester, how many of us are, are going this year? Fourteen. Fourteen of us are going on a mission trip this, this week to Gray and so, Northwest Territories. Never been that far north in my entire life. I'm sure the mosquitoes are as big as me. But, uh, or at least the black flies. Anyhow, but you know that it's it's not just for the mission team to go through. It's every one of us. Sure, we're going and in, in, get in cars on Friday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, an ungodly time. I don't think anybody gets up to that time anymore. Well, that's not true. I know people do. But, you know, it's, it's a crazy time. We're going to get in the car. We're going to drive 16 hours straight up to Ray. We're not stopping this year. We're going straight through, all the way up for, for one, in one call. On the way back, we're going to stop overnight because I'm sure we're going to be wiped out at that time. But we're, we're on the way up this year, we're going straight up to Ray, one day. And you know, it's, it's sure, we're, we're getting in the car, we're going, we're being missionaries, we're going to go and we're going to hopefully make new disciples of Jesus Christ as we go. But you that are left behind, that are here to be praying for us and, be, and to be lifting us up to God as we go, you also are required not just to sit back and to do nothing. You are going to go too as well. 
disciples on mission reaching the lost and all the nations for Christ. Those of us who are called children of God. No matter who we are in Christ, no matter what we do, no matter what, what to, if we're paid staff or we're full time uh, in, the, in the ministry, doesn't matter. We're to go to the lost. No matter where we are, we are to share the good news. And it's not going to be easy. I'm sure you're, it's, 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 not, it's one of the hardest things that we are we're called to do. But it'll be what is worth it. Earlier we had uh, Christy read for us in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Another passage that I want us to just draw our attention to this morning. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us, But you will receive the power when the, when the Holy Spirit has come unto you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You look at this passage. Basically what Jesus is telling them is, you're going to start where you live. You're, I want you to be my witnesses where, where you are, in your home, in your hometown. And then he goes out from there, he says, and then all Judea. So in other words, all the area around you, the province around you, in the greater Edmonton area. So out to even St. Albert or Sherwood Park, Spruce Grove, uh, Stony Plain, and further in those areas, further out around us. So he's broadening their, 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 their man to go. But not only there, he goes on to Samaria. Now, you know, I think Samaria, when he says Samaria, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. It's kind of like telling you you're going to go to your enemies as well. The, the Samaritans were not highly thought of because they were a mixed people. They were Gentile, Gentiles and Jews mixed together. And they were, they were considered to be sort of a cast off from the people of Israel. Now, who's those that are your cast off? This morning as we drove in, I don't know if any, some of you might have seen on our front porch here at the church, I mean, we had a horrible storm last night, but there was a, you know, a fellow picking up his bed and getting ready to move on. We go up there and scold him for stopping overnight. Some people would leave him, yes. The reality is, he was looking for shelter. Maybe it's going down to the muscle. Maybe it's whole mission, those people there. Maybe it's, some, it's something else. Maybe it's going to Calgary. It's, it's horrible Stampede fans and, and Calgary Flame fans. I mean, who could, who could ever cheer for those teams? Like, it's unbelievable what anybody does. But you know, we, though, I don't know who, you're, who those people are that, that you just can't handle being around. But those are our Samaritan people. That's our Samaria. It could be just your neighbor. You know, that, that neighbor that just... You know, never cuts his grass. Uh, his garbage is always, you know, a mess. You know, I don't know. It, uh, it, it, basically, that's my, that's me and for my neighbor. Because our garbage is, we don't have a real great garbage collection area. It's always, you know, we have to take it out to the street. And, and our grass, I figure, God, God created it. I can even get a little longer than, than, than some people like to cut it short, you know. So I don't mind. I think it just helps the environment. It just creates more, more oxygen. So I'm the bad neighbor. So, but, uh, you know, I don't know what you, who, you, who, you, who that is for you. But that's who, that, that's who he was challenging them to go to. So start in your home. And start then go out a little bit further. And then go a little further to Samaria. So, and then and even to the ends of the earth. Now for some of us, for me, today, that, that's great. Second, that seems like the end of the earth. You know, that seems that's a long ways away. I don't think I've ever tried driven that, that far um, in one day. Uh, the Vancouver is the farthest I've driven, which is pretty close. You know, it's about 10, 13 hours. But another three hours, I guess. Um, 13, 14 hours to Vancouver for if you go through Pocahola and, and to drive. But, uh, you know, but anyhow, you, you would go even further. What I see this as, Basically, is what he's telling them. You go now, you, you start at home where you're comfortable, and, as you, and then you go a little bit further, and then you go to those people that you're not really comfortable with, the Samaritans, and then you go to the ends of the earth. So in other words, way outside of what you think is possible. Because what is the ends of the earth? It's a goal. When you get to the end, you get back to the start, basically, right? So go until you get back home. Go until you 
get back to the start. Don't stop until you get back to where, where, you, where you began. In some ways, that's hard to I because I started here, and, I, and now we're back, back to the start. But I don't think I've got to the end of the earth yet. Although sometimes we felt like it. Been to places that I thought I couldn't believe what I saw around me when we went to the Dominican. I've never seen kids so hungry that they, once you offer them something, they just attack you. Verse 8, it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who should I send? 